Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Butcher. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon and I'm sitting here in my backyard watching my kids jump on the trampoline. So if you hear any screaming or, you know, I don't know, screaming, that's what's going on. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll just count and see how many times they interrupt us today. And I'm going to give you the following steps so that you can solve these. The first step is to isolate your absolute value on the left side. I mean, I guess you could do it on the right, but just isolate the absolute value, get all the other stuff away from it. Step two, we're going to split that absolute value inequality into two different inequalities. So, just like we did when we were doing the equations, we're going to do one with the positive version of what's inside of the uh, bars, and one with the negative version of what's inside of the bars. Step three, then, is to solve each inequality. Step four, graph those solutions on a number line. And step five, write your answer as an interval or intervals, as the case may be. Oh yeah, and my kids have interrupted me twice now, but you didn't hear it because it was happened to be while, well, you know, I wasn't recording. Yay. All right, our first example, we're going to solve the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5 for all real numbers. So step one says to isolate the absolute value. It's already isolated. Step two says to split it into two inequalities. So let's do that. Okay, 2x minus 3 is greater than 5 or equal to 5, and the negative of 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5. Now, step three, solve each inequality. So over here, if we add 3 to both sides, we get 2x is greater than or equal to 8. Divide both sides by 2, x is greater than or equal to 4. And then on this side, if I divide both sides by negative 1, I have 2x minus 3. Remember when you divide by a negative, you have to switch that sign. Then we will add 3 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Then we will divide both sides by 2. x is less than or equal to negative 1. All right, so we have two solutions. We're going to put it on the number line. For the red part, x is greater than or equal to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. Greater than or equal to is a closed circle, and greater than goes to the right. And we will color this arrow in because it does keep going. All right, and x is less than or equal to negative 1. So a, a closed circle on the negative 1. Shade everything to the left and color the arrow. So everything in my red or brown or tan or whatever that, well, that is, anything in either of those areas, here or here, will satisfy this equation, or this inequality, pardon me. So now we need to choose and write our answer. Our answer is going to be in interval notation, um, negative infinity to negative one inclusive and four to infinity, like that. All right. Okay, in our last example, we were solving for all reals. So whatever answers we got, as long as they weren't imaginary, they were included. But this time, we're going to solve the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than 6, but only for integers. So we're going to follow the same steps. We're going to isolate the absolute value, which it already is, and then we're going to split it into two inequalities. So we've got 2x plus 3 is less than 6, and the negative of 2x plus 3 in parentheses is less than 6. Then we're going to solve each one. So if I add, I'm, I'm sorry, if I take away 3, I get 2x is less than 3, and then I'm going to divide by 2. x is less than 3 halves, which is 1.5. All right, over here, if I divide both sides by negative 1, I have 2x plus 3, switch the sign, is greater than negative 6. That should be a 3. Sorry, guys. Um, take away 3 from both sides now. 2x is greater than negative 9. And divide by 2, x is greater than negative 9 halves. All right, so now we're going to put this on a number line. All right, so 3 halves, 1.5. That's about right. That's right there, 3 halves. And I have less than that. So I'm going to shade everything that way, right? However, we also want to do greater than negative 9 halves. Negative 9 halves would be negative 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4.5 right there. 
greater than that. So our result is in this area that is overlapped. Here, I'll use a different color. It's in this area right here. Oh, look, another interruption. Hey, buddy. Now recall that we are only going to answer this problem with the integers that are in that box. So there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there. Those are the only ones, right? Even though it's um, negative 4.5, that's not an integer, so it doesn't count. So when we write our answer, remember if it's um, specific values, we put it in the fancy brackets and we write it out. So in this case, it'll be negative 4, comma, negative 3, comma, I'm running out of space here, negative 2, comma, negative 1, comma, 0, comma, and 1, all in the fancy brackets. And that's how you do that. All right, here's another one. It doesn't say for anything, so we'll just uh, go with all reals here. But now we need to turn this into two different inequalities. So we will write negative 5 is less than x plus 1 is less than 7, and negative 5 is less than the negative of x plus 1 is less than 7. And once again, don't forget those parentheses. Now, do you see how this is, this is what we call a compound? It's got two parts. That's okay. All you have to do is subtract one from both sides here. So I'm going to take away one, I'm going to take away one, and I'm going to take away one. So I've got negative 6 is less than x is less than 6. Boom. All right, over here, I'm going to, there's several things we could do. Um, let's just go ahead and divide out the negative 1 first. So we've got 5, switch the sign x plus 1, switch the sign, and negative 7. And then because I don't like to have it backwards like that, I'm going to reverse it. Negative 7 is less than x plus 1 is less than 5. And then when we take away 1, negative 8 is less than x is less than 4. There. So now we have two intervals where it could be between negative 6 and positive 6 and between negative 8 and positive 4. So now you have to ask yourself, well, where does it really exist? Here I've drawn a number line for you. All right, the first interval is from negative 6 to 6, so it's supposed to be between here and here. The other one says it's supposed to be between negative 8 and 4. So now you may ask yourself, well, what part counts? So let's think about this. If I plug in a negative 8, then I would have negative 5 is less than the absolute value of negative 8 plus 1 is less than 7, right? And the absolute value of negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. The absolute value of that is 7. Is 7 between negative 5 and 7? Well, it is, but it's not equal to. So we know we're going to have an open circle there, okay? Is negative 7 okay? Even though it's not in this red part here, would it be okay? Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. The absolute value of that is 6. Is 6 between negative 5 and positive 7? Yes, it is. So that's okay. And then everything in this overlap, we can assume, when I mean, we know is everything, you know, this is all okay, all of this is going to be okay. What about 5? Five? 5's not in the overlap, but if you plugged it in, 5 plus 1 is also 6. And 6 is between negative 5 and 7, so 5 is okay. And 6, if we plug 6 in there, 6 plus 1 is 7. And so once again, we need the open circle thing. So we're going to have everything between negative 8 and 6, not including negative 8 and 6. So our solution is the interval from negative 8 to 6, non-inclusive. All right, another example. Absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than negative 3. And you could go through and solve this um, just following the steps, but you're not going to get the right answer. I mean, the answer that you get will be true, but you won't have the whole thing because if you use a little bit of common sense, you know that the absolute value is always going to be greater than negative 3. Always. And if it's always greater than negative 3, then any x value will work. So on your answer, on your number line, you're 
going to shade in the entire thing. I know I'm getting messy, I don't really care. Alright, so you're going to shade your entire number line and your answer is going to be x given x equals all real numbers if you wanted to do set notation or negative infinity to positive infinity like I like to use interval notation all x's will work you could pick any x you want plug it in there and see that no matter what because you're taking the absolute value of it it will always be greater than negative three so here's a similar problem absolute value of x plus one is less than negative six and you could start solving this and you would actually get some numbers and you could put them on a number line but then if you checked them they wouldn't actually work why because absolute value is never less than negative six it's negative never negative never so the last one was always this one's never so there are no x's that work it's the empty set nothing no solution are you coloring on my try? Hey, Adam wants to say hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, one more example. And I promise this is the last one, but I wanted one where we have an X over here. All right, so we're going to follow the instructions. Isolate the absolute value on the left side. I didn't give you any that weren't absolute, uh, isolated. But what if I had a little plus two or something over here on the left? You've got to make sure you move it over to the right before you go um, solving the problem. All right, so we've got 3x minus 2 by itself, greater than or equal to 4x. And then we also have the negative of 3x minus 2, greater than or equal to 4x. All right, so now we're going to solve both of these. Um, in this case, when I combine like terms, I need to subtract 4x from this side and add 2 to that side. So 3x minus 4x is going to be negative x. And then I add 2 to the other side. And now I need to divide by negative 1, so I need to switch my sign. And there's the 50,000th interruption. What? Where was I? All right, other side here. Um, let's just divide off the negative first. 3x minus 2, switch the sign, negative 4x. So I'm going to add 4x over to the left. I get 7x. I'm going to add 2 to the other side, and then I'm going to divide by 7. x is less than or equal to 2 sevenths. So let's put these on the number line. x is less than or equal to negative 2 is going to be everything from here on down. And x is less than or equal to 2 sevenths. 2 sevenths would be just a little bit more than 0, right? So look right about there everything from here on down. So now we're like, okay, well, what part do we use? So once again, test some stuff. See what's going to happen. If you plugged in a negative 1, we would have the absolute value of 3 times negative 1 minus 2 should be greater than or equal to 4 times negative 1. And automatically, I look at this and I go, okay, well, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and the absolute value of anything is greater than negative 4, so that's going to work. And if you used 0, then I would have 3 times 0 minus 2, so negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is 2, greater than or equal to 4 times 0, that's true. So we're going to use everything that's actually less than or equal to 2 sevenths. So our solution um, hard, or I'm sorry, solid circle on two sevenths. And if you're drawing this on a number line, just label the point if it's not already labeled. And less than color, shade the arrow to continue it down. And we'll write it in interval notation. So negative infinity to two sevenths inclusive. All right, so that's it. And you guys have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.